Do you want to set up a quick and simple AI in Unreal? Lucky for you, I now have a full video covering everything you need to do to set up a basic enemy AI. By the end of this video, you will have an enemy that will catch the player, reset their game, and wander around when they don't see the player. First step is to drag out a nav mesh bound volume object from the actors panel. Next in its detail panel, set the scale to 20x, 20y, 5z, and move it to cover the whole area like so. Next, press the P key on your keyboard to show a green colored visualization of the nav mesh. Notice how the nav mesh contains visual artifacts on the stairs. This can happen because the nav mesh is a simplified representation of the collision on the level. Select the recast nav mesh default actor in the outliner window and go to the details panel. Go to the display section and set the draw offset value to 50. This adjusts the height offset where the navigation mesh is drawn for better readability. Next, go to the World Settings tab and change the Game Mode Override to Game Mode. This will give us a free cam view when simulating the game for testing purposes. Now that we have a nav mesh, we'll need to make an agent to roam in it. For now, this agent will be roaming randomly, though we will be building on this in future videos. Please subscribe and ring the bell to see those. The first step in setting up an agent is to right click on the content browser and select new folder and name it navigation system. Next, go to third person, then blueprint, then left click the VP third person character and drag it to the navigation system folder and select copy here. Next, rename it to BP underscore NPC underscore nav mesh and open it in the blueprint viewer, then dock the window. Next, select all of the input nodes and delete them. Then we will need to create a custom event by right clicking and searching for add custom event. Then name it to move NPC. Next, we will drag out a get actor location node. Then from that, drag out a get random reachable point in radius node and set the radius to a thousand units. Then drag from the random location pin and select promote to variable. Then hook it up to the custom event from earlier. Right click the event graph, search for an AI move to node. Next, connect the random location node to the AI move to node. Then for the pawn pin, select a get a reference. From the on success pin, drag out a delay node set to four. Then from the delay, call the move NPC event like this. Do the same for on fail, but change the delay to point once. And we can right click the event graph and search for event begin play. Next, drag from the event begin play node, then search for and select the move NPC event. Finally, you can conclude by saving and compiling. Then to show it off, you can drag out the blueprint to the level, click the play button, and you'll see the AI going to random locations in the level. Now that we have the random roaming in place, we need to set up a chase system for our AI. The first step to catching the player is to know where they are. We will start by opening up our blueprint from last time, and in the viewport we will want to add a pawn sensing component. Now you should see three wireframes that represent the different sensing ranges. For this tutorial, we are doing a sight only system, so we only need to focus on the green circle that represents the FOV of our enemy. I will change my sight radius to something smaller, like 1500. We can keep everything else at default, so then we can scroll down till we see the on C pawn event and press the plus icon next to it to add it to the event graph. 
Next, we can take a cast to third person character node from the pawn pin of the on C pawn node. Next, we can make a bool called seeing player. Then we can go to the pin from the cast node and right click it and select promote to variable. Call it player followed. Next, we can right click the event graph and search for a sequence node. Next, from the first pin of the sequence, we can drag out the seeing player pool. We can set it to true. Next, from the other pin, we want to drag out a retriggerable delay and set it to 0.1 seconds longer than our sensing interval, which is 0.5, so set it to 0.6. Then, from that, drag out our seeing player bool and have it set to false. This is to detect when the AI can't see the player anymore. Now that we have a way to tell when we see the player, all we need to do is make it work with our existing system such that it will wander when it is not chasing us. To do this, we can right click the event graph and search for a tick event node. Then from it, drag out a branch node using the seeing player bool as the input. From the true, drag out a do once node followed by an AI move to node. For pawn, drag out and search for self. Then for destination, drag out a get actor location node. Then for target, use the player followed variable from earlier. Then from the unlabeled output of the AI move to node, drag it to the reset pin on the do once node and use redirect nodes by double clicking the line to make it look better. Then back at the branch from the false pin, we can drag out another do once node followed by a move NPC node followed by a delay set to 4 seconds. Then take the output of the delay to the reset pin and use redirects to make it look better. Now go back up to the move NPC function and remove the delay nodes and the nodes that recall the function. Next, remove the begin play code. Then finally you can save and compile it. Now go back to your main map and make sure that you go to the world settings tab and change the game mode override back to BP underscore third person game mode as our blueprint requires that to work. Then you can test it by pressing play. When they can't see, they should wander around the level. When they can see you, they should try to chase you. Now that we can chase the player, all we need is a way to catch them and reset their game so they can finally post challenge. First we need to make the UI for the game over screen. The first step is to make a new folder in the content browser and call it UI. Then in the UI folder, you want to make a new widget interface by right clicking and then selecting user interface, then widget blueprint. Next in the pop up, just select user widget and name it end screen UI and open it. The first thing you want to do is look for a canvas panel and drag it out into the designer. Next, drag out a text block, then in the content tag, change it to say game over. Then under font, change the size to 128 and the justification to center. Next, change the anchors to center and the size to 1000x 200y with the position negative 500x negative 200y then add another text block and add the text press any key to restart then make the font 48 with a centered justification next set the anchors to center and the size to 1000x 100y with a position of negative 500x, 0y, 
Next, we can go to the event graph and remove the pre-made nodes. Then right click the event graph and search for and select the any key event. Then from it, drag out and execute console command node. Then type in open plus the name of your level. Then for a specific player, just drag out a get owning player node. Finally, save, compile, and close it. Now we can go over the code that will catch the player. We will start by going to the BP third person character blueprint found in third person, then blueprint. Next, open it. Then in the event graph, right click and search for add custom event and name it lose. Then from it, drag out a create widget node, set to the end screen UI widget. Next, drag out an Add to Viewport node, followed by a Disable Movement node. Then save and compile. Next, we can go to the BP underscore NPC underscore nav mesh blueprint found in our navigation system folder and open it. First, drag out a reference to the player followed variable. Then, from it, drag out and search for lose. Then connect it to the on success pin of our AI move to node from the chase system. Then change the input to go to the target actor pin instead of the destination pin. Then we need to disconnect the blank pin from the reset pin of the do once node and instead use the on fail pin. Finally, save and compile. You now have a full AI chasing and caching system perfect for any game. In the next episode, I will introduce the idea of behavior trees so we can optimize our code. If you want to see that, I would recommend subscribing and ringing the bell for weekly content. If you want to support my work, feel free to buy me a coffee on Patreon to get exclusive perks. Above, you should see a playlist for more AI tutorials in UE5. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave them below. Have a good day, and bye for now.